All right, today we are going to finish the second part of 9A and 9B. And to do that, we are going to set up a chart to show you how to do some of these stoichiometry problems. What we're going to do is make life a little bit easier because right now, let's say if we go from grams of something to moles of something, okay, we use molar mass as one conversion factor. Um, now, what we've added in this part is going from moles of A to moles of B using the mole ratio, right? And that comes from the balanced chemical equation. That's the coefficients. Okay, and then we potentially could have to go from moles to grams ah, of this substance by again using molar mass. So we still are only going to have two conversion factors right now. We've got molar mass, we've got mole ratio. Now, we re in reality also need to be leery of going anywhere from kilograms to picograms on the other end. That's why we did some of those reviews. But potentially you're talking about a one, two, three, four step problem, which can just be ugly and really difficult for people. So I'm going to show you another way to set up what's called stoichiometry charts. And hopefully this will help some of you. For those of you that like dimensional analysis, you can keep using it this way. I'm just going to show you another method. Okay, so we're going to start with this problem right here. Um, also, if you need to take out, make sure you have a calculator and uh, potentially a periodic table handy. The yellow one should be at the front of the room if you're watching this in class. Okay, so what are they telling us? Well, my known is 23.7 moles of aluminum. My unknown is how many grams of oxygen. Okay, so potentially, if you want to do dimension analysis, I can go from moles of aluminum to moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. Okay, and for those of you who are good at it, you can do it that way. I'm just going to go ahead and show you another another setup. Um, you're probably going to need a separate sheet of paper to write this down. This video will also be on eChalk if you want to rewatch it in the future as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and come over here to my smart board. And I already have a chart set up. And this is how we're going to write on this chart. Okay, first of all, we have to put the balanced chemical equation up top. So I've got my two aluminum oxides. Okay, um, decomposes, I actually have an extra um, column, so I'll just go ahead and put the arrow there. Decomposes into four aluminums and three oxygens. Now, if you want to use this chart, this is why you need to label it. You need to start with grams up top. Then you need to put molar mass, then you're going to put moles, then you're going to put what we're going to refer to as change, which is simply going to be the coefficients from the reaction. Then we're going to have a row which what we're going to refer to as x. Okay, now you don't have to worry about what x means, but you're going to see how it's going to be easier to explain these. Now, just as a reminder, the two conversion factors that we are always going to know our molar mass and change, our coefficients. So let's go ahead and fill those in where we're going to need them for our problems. Okay, so first of all, the change or the coefficients is simply these numbers right here. So the aluminum oxide is going to get a 2, the aluminum is going to get a 4, and the oxygen is going to get a 3. Okay, and again, that just comes from the chemical, the coefficients. Okay, 2, 4, and 3, so that's my change, 3, 4, and 2. Okay, what did they tell me? Well, they told me that I had, oh, let's see here, 23.7 moles of aluminum. Now, what am I solving for? Well, I'm looking for grams of oxygen. Okay, so that's the ones that I am looking for is grams of oxygen. So, here are the rules on the chart. Any time, I always still have to start with my known value. Okay, so I still start wherever my known value is. Any time I go down the chart, I divide. Excuse me, any time I come back up the chart, I multiply. So let's go ahead and start this. If I say 23.7, I'm going to divide it by 4. I'm going to get 5.925. Okay, I always want to carry usually an extra significant figure. Here's the nice part about this x. I then take the x over to the column for where I'm solving for. So I divided going down. Now I'm going to go ahead and take 5.925 
And now remember, I'm going back up the chart. Oops. So I'm going to multiply. So I take 5.295 times 3, and it is safer to keep these on your calculator and not clear them, that way you get a better answer, but 17.775. Now I run into a empty space, but here's the thing. This is one of my conversion factors, my molar mass. So all I have to do is find the molar mass of O2, all right, which remember, oxygen is 16.00, there are two of them, so the molar mass for oxygen all by itself is just 32.00. I do not multiply it by 3. I guarantee someone's going to do it. It's going to happen. We already took the 3 account into account down here, so it's only, okay, it is only the formula that we use for the molar mass. That's it. Okay, so now what I got to do is I take my 17.775, or if you still have it on your calculator, multiply it by 32. I had three significant figures in my original answer. I get 569 grams of oxygen, and that's it. That's my final answer. Okay, now again, some of you could have done dimensional analysis going um, moles to moles and then moles to grams. You should get the same answer. So if you want to try it that way, go ahead. All right, let's do a couple more. If we look at number four, okay, this time my known, again, is going to be 2.00 grams of aluminum oxide. I want to know how many moles. Okay, so I'm going to come back to another chart here. There we go. Okay, again, I got to rewrite my equation. So it takes a little bit of time, but you'd have to do that if you were solving for it anyway. So two aluminum oxides. Remember, I'm just, I have an extra column. You don't necessarily have to do it that way, but I'm not going to change it at this point. <clears throat> now this time, my known is 2.00 grams of aluminum oxide. My unknown is going to be moles of oxygen. So I'm going to go ahead and use the abbreviations. So I'm going to put grams, mm for molar mass, moles, we don't really abbreviate really well, change, and x. So what did they tell me? Well, I'm starting with 2.00 grams of aluminum oxide. What am I looking for? I'm going to highlight it. I'm looking for moles of oxygen. Okay, that's what I'm solving for out here. So here again, I remember that the two that are conversion factors that I always will know if I need them are molar masses and changes. So let's go ahead and plug the changes in just because that's the easiest one. Change is going to be the coefficient, so it's still 2. Even though we're not looking about aluminum or need anything with aluminum, I'm still going to go ahead and put it in there. And then oxygen is 3. Now the other piece that I can always figure out is molar mass. Okay, remember, I'm only going to focus on the formula. Oops, not quite sure. Oh, I'm coloring it in with a crayon. Okay, we don't want a crayon. We just want to highlight it. I only need aluminum oxide. So if I go to the periodic table, I'm going to take two aluminums, I'm going to take three oxygens. It should come out to be 101.96 for my molar mass of aluminum oxide. And now I'm ready to do the problem. I'm going to go down the chart, I can divide, and then when I come back up, I'm going to multiply. So I take 2.00, divide it by 101.96, and that's going to give me 0 0.01962. I always want to carry at, l at least one extra significant figure. Take that number, I divide it by 2, I get 0 0.009808. Now remember, this one only has four sig figs because those two out front do not count. So now I'm going to take my x value, I got to figure out oxygen. So I come over here, I've got my 0 0.009808. I multiply it by three, three significant figures in my original eight answer, so I need to get 0 0.0294 moles of O2. Okay, you still have to have everything labeled. All right, let's do one more together. Um, let's go ahead and look at number five on the PowerPoint. This time we're going to go all the way from grams to grams. We've got 14.45 grams of aluminum oxide. How many grams of aluminum will we end with? Okay. So if we come back over again, I got one more chart set up here. I'm going to go ahead and write my reaction one more time, where I get two aluminum oxides 
Again, I usually won't have that extra column, but I put an extra column in my table. Okay, so known and unknown, which I still have to do because it still helps me figure out where I'm going. I'm starting with 21.9 grams, right? Nope, I'm lying. I'm doing the wrong one here. That's the next one that you guys are going to do. I'm going to start with, there we go, 14.45 grams of aluminum oxide. And I want to know the grams of aluminum. Okay, so I have to label my chart. If you're going to if you're going to do dimensional analysis, you got to label the boxes. If you're going to use the chart, you have to label the sides, otherwise I'm going to take off for it. So we got grams, mm for molar mass, we've got moles, we've got change, and we've got x. We're starting with 14.45 grams. What we're looking to solve for is our grams of aluminum. Okay, I don't need anything with oxygen, so it didn't ask me anything about oxygen. I don't need that column. And remember, the two that we will always know are molar mass and change. So let's go ahead and fill those. Well, sort fill. Yeah, we'll go ahead and fill those in. Remember, our change is just our coefficient. So two, two, four, four, three, three. Now, molar mass we already found on the last slide. And remember, that was two aluminums and three oxygens, not. We don't multiply it by 2, okay, because we take this into account. So it's 101.96. Now we're eventually going to have to take this number and come all the way down, come all the way over, and go all the way up. So I'm going to need the molar mass of aluminum. So if you find aluminum on the periodic table, its molar mass is simply 26.98. Again, I do not take into account that 4 when I do molar masses. If it was oxygen, I do because it's a subscript, okay, I only take into account the subscripts. Okay, so I'm going to take 14.45. Remember, going down the chart, I divide. Up the chart, I multiply. So 14.45 divided by 101.96 is going to be 0.14172. Take that number, divide it by 2, because remember, these are my conversion factors. I'm going to get 0 0.07086. We carry this over here. Four sig or at least four sig figs, 0 0.07086. I multiply it by four because when I go back up the chart, I multiply. I'm going to get 0 0.28344. Then I'm going to take that number. Remember, the safer way to get the right answer is to just leave it on your calculator, but you don't necessarily have to do it that way. I take 0 0.28344 times 26.98, I get 7.6. Four seven grams of aluminum. Now, just for kicks, let's say it asks you to find the um, oh, let's say milligrams. Okay, just as a another step of where you would see those unit prefixes come in, you still would find your answer the exact same way. So you'd get seven point six four seven grams of aluminum. It's a bad six right there. Let's say it wanted to know milligrams. Well, there are one thousand milligrams in one gram. So we'd take this answer, we'd multiply it by a thousand. Keeping it in scientific notation, we get 7.647 milligrams of aluminum. Don't get thrown if you see milli or micro or kilo. You still can use the chart. You're just going to take these numbers and convert them at the end. Okay? All right, so what you're going to do now is you're going to try number six. Um, on your own and then I will give you the solution and we will see how we do. Okay, good luck.